Hello class, today I'm going to show you a simple element arrangement for implementation workshop. As you can see in this uh, figure, we have two spring elements, uh, element number one and element number two. Because we have two elements, the number of nodes is going to be three, node 1, node 2, and node 3. We have two forces applied for node 3, which we call it F3, and F2, which applied for node 2. K1 and K2 are going to be our uh, stiffness of the spring. Okay, so let's write a code for this case. Open your MATLAB, a new script. So let's write. The first thing is going to be, can be our, uh, define our global matrix. So define a global matrix, global stiffness matrix, stiffness matrix. So usually we name it K, which is going to be how many nodes we have. If we, I go back here, I have uh, three nodes. So it is going to be three by three. So all zeros for now, zeros, three rows, three columns, done. This is going to be my global matrix. Then the next step is going to be uh, constructing this global matrix. Again, let's go back to the uh, elements. The, for the first element, we know we are going to have a 2 by 2 matrix using this stiffness, K1. Another 2, another two, two by 2 for this stiff, for this element using K2 and uh, how we do this we use uh, let me bring my arrow here so we construct this global matrix K1 negative K1 K1 and negative K1 for fir first and second row first and second columns so if you want to construct the uh, global matrix first, you need to replace K1, negative K1 for first and second row and column. For the second one, for second element, you need to construct or add K2 to second and third column and rows. So I'm going to exact, do the exact same thing. So let's see, uh, this is Ke is my element stiffness matrix, which is going to be, for example, uh, K1 times the matrix 1, negative 1, first row, second row is going to be negative 1 and 1. Okay, very well. Now let's use this. Now I'm going to use this uh, element stiffness matrix to construct a global one. So, as we know, I need to put this element matrix to the first and second row and column. So. To put there, I'm going to write 1 to 2 row and do the same, 1 to 2 column. For those row and columns, put these. Let's copy this. Plus element. 
matrix, stiffness matrix. Okay, you may ask why I did this, why I add this, because if you don't put it this here, uh, uh, MATLAB is not going to change the value of K matrix. So basically, I'm adding this element matrix to this row and columns of this K matrix, and then putting in the K matrix. Otherwise, MATLAB won't do that. So let's write the, a note for this. So oh. and K E to rows one and two and columns one and two. So later when we are reading we can we can find out what was the reason we did. So for this for the next element we know that we need to put for second and third row. Second and third column. So the procedure is going to be exactly the same. So I'm, let's copy this here. This time K1 is going to be K2. And from 2 to 3, I don't want to touch the others. Just 2 to 3 columns. Copy this here. Okay, done. Now let's uh, define our forces. So define forces. So let's write it as a F equal a matrix. The first force is the fixed support, so zero. Because I would like to be a column matrix, so that is why I put uh, instead of comma, the semicolon. Then I don't know what is F2 and F3. Okay. Uh, okay, we found the stiffness mat the force matrix. Let's do the same for displacement matrix. Displacement D is going to equal. Everything is going to be zero for now, zeros. And three rows and one column. Perfect. Okay. Uh, now, before going further, let's let's put some numbers for uh, F two, F three, K one, and K two. So, because I we want to solve the problem. So, K one. Mm, Let's put 1,000. K2, 2,000, so two different stiffness. F2, uh, supposed to be negative 500 because it is to the left side. And F3, is 1000. So now uh, they're not parameters, we assign some values for those uh, 
problem parameters. So let's write it as a uh, question parameters. Okay. Now the next step is going to be solving the problem. Let's solve it. Uh, we know displacement is equal force divided by stiffness or force times inverse of the stiffness matrix. So displacement, but for which row, rows or columns I need to solve? We know we always put uh, boundary condition aside. So because uh, for the node number one, displacement is zero, and we already know that. So I'm going to solve it from two to three. Why? Because when I was defining D or displacement, I put all zero. Let me show you. Stop it here. So let's save this as uh, my number one M1 and uh, because I saved now I can stop the run here so when we check this let's there D is going to be a, a column matrix 3 by 1 and all initial values are zero. So if I do the calculation for two to three, automatically the number one was uh, assigned zero and everything is going to be correct. So I don't need to take care of the number one. And this is going to be equal K matrix again from two to three row two to three column. Basically, we cross out the first row and column. We need to divide F by K. F is going to be, again, 2, 2, 3. OK, excellent. <clears throat> now we solve the problem. Uh, you may say, what is this 2, 2, 3? how it works, you don't need always put the numbers there. You can say, for example, uh, range. This is a new variable I defined. And range is going to be any number 2 to 3. So instead of writing 2 to 3 for every all of them, I can just replace range. Okay, so we solve D for this. If you want to find reaction force, let's write uh, what is the force. To find force, I need to find what is the difference between D2 and D1. So let's call S1 is going to be D at node 2, displacement at node 2 minus D at displacement number 1. So it is going to be the, uh, the, the length, the change of length for the element number 1. And force number 1 is going to be K1 times S1. And we can do the same for force number 2. So this is going to be between 3 and 2 and S2, S2 
and force number two, two. Okay, let's check check what is the first save it and let's stop it here and run. Okay, so K1, these are the parameters we assigned. Then we said let's have a uh, let me stop it here. Then we define a K matrix. Uh, let's save it. And clear. So now I can stop it. <coughs> Okay, so these are the parameters. Let's go one step. Then we define k, 3 by 3, all zeros, because we had three nodes. And then one by one, uh, we decided to uh, put the uh, element matrix, this ke, inside the main matrix. So let's go, what is ke? Ke is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by uh, the stiffness of that matrix. So 1000, negative 1000, negative 1000, and 1000. Then we add this matrix to the, stiff, the global stiffness matrix just for the rows and columns we are interested. So the next step, as you can see, we just add it to first and second row and column. Then we did the same for uh, second element. This is the uh, stiffness matrix of the uh, element. If I go further, now you can see we added. And the uh, second row and column, they added because at that point, that uh, um, center data was 1,000 by adding the second element. We added 2,000 more, so it is 3,000. And then we define the force matrix. The first one is 0 because the fixed support, and then F2 and F3 was the external forces we had. Then we define the displacement matrix, column matrix, all 0. And Define the range we want to solve. We exclude the, uh, the boundary, which we know that displacement is going to be zero, and we solve D for the rest. The first one is zero, we already knew that. Second one is half, and the third displacement is one. Then we can do uh, extra uh, calculation. So S1 was the D2 minus D1, D2 was half, D1 was zero, so S1 is going to be half, K1 was 1000, so F1 was five, we found 5000, 500, and then again we, we did calculation for S2, S D, D3, or displacement for the element uh, for node 3 was 1, for node 2 is half, so it is again going to be half multiplied by k2, we can get the f3, f2. Okay, which is negative 500. Okay, thank you very much. See you next time.